Look, my last memories of Afghanistan were in uh, June 2012, and um, I was blind at the time. I'd just been blown up, and uh, but I could hear. And uh, what I could hear was the, the cries from Rahman. Rahman was our interpreter who had stepped on the IED right in front of me. And uh, he was still alive. He later died. He was the kind of guy who we're leaving behind. He was the kind of allies that we had, these people who would sacrifice for our country. As I was moved to the, to the uh, evac helicopter, they were laying down cover fire for me. One of those guys laying down cover fire, his name was Dave Warson. Two months later, he was dead. Uh, in a helicopter crash with one of my other best friends, Pat Feeks. You know, the question is, do these guys die in vain? It's a question a lot of our veterans are asking after this bungled exit from Afghanistan. And, and the answer is no, because there was a realization that for 20 years we were keeping America safe from another 9-11. Unfortunately, our politicians never really clearly articulated that to the American people. And that lack of communication resulted in this mess that we're in now. There's going to be a reckoning for the decisions that led up to this. But, you know, we, we talk about accountability in the SEAL teams quite a bit. Hyper accountability, really. Everything is your fault, even if it's not, because it must be. That's leadership. Accountability for your actions. Accountability for what, wrong, what went wrong. Admission that something went wrong. How about that? And then doing things, taking actions to fix it. That's what we've been asking for for weeks. When we still had a chance, I asked this administration, go back on offense, reset the chessboard. You've screwed things up, admit it. Now reset the chessboard and regain our leverage. They said no. They wanted to stick to their arbitrary surrender deadline, and they left. So what is today about? It's about fixing this. It's about taking action. But first, the administration has to admit it's wrong. Stop running victory laps. It's like the arsonist claiming they did a really great job putting the fire out when in fact there's actually still people inside. That's the kind of analogy that we have here. No admission that anything's wrong, running victory laps, and refusal to do anything about it. And then when we come today, the Speaker of the House can't even show up. She sent a different representative in her stead. She couldn't even show up to face us and say that she will not allow this bill to go forward. This is a common sense bill. Again, behind closed doors, Democrats have asked for the same things. Accountability of what's there, accountability of who is there, and then a plan for how we're going to get them out. Pretty simple. Just a plan. Just a recognition that there's even a problem and that we need to address it. And of course, not recognizing the Taliban. Stop giving in to the Taliban. I, I can't believe we even have to ask for that. I can't believe Secretary Blinken is even toying with the idea that these illegitimate terrorists could ever be recognized as a government. They're on our terrorist watch list. They, they, were, they were driving around our Black Hawk helicopters with our allies hanging from below them. They're going around and killing sprees, killing American citizens and, and allies. That's who these people are. That's who they always were. That's why we had to fight them. We ended no wars yesterday. We're still at war. And it's time that our administration actually recognizes that and recognizes that there's American citizens on the ground still at war, and we need to get them out. Thank you, and I want to uh, introduce